هلا بالخميس هلا 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 بالخميس ويكند عيال هلا بالخميس هلا بالخميس هلا 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 بالخميس ويكند عيال بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Um, after a long, أحمد how long has been? Quite some time, إن شاء الله. Long break. We finally have another segment of the Ilm Hub. الحمد لله. It's not on a Thursday evening as usual, but we will, إن شاء الله تعالى, be premiering this episode إن شاء الله next week Monday. On the 8th of January, insha'Allah ta'ala. Lots has happened. You don't see Mawlana Ashik or Sheikh Ibrahim or Sheikh Isa. They've all left me uh, for good, insha'Allah, no, for good reasons. But insha'Allah ta'ala, we will catch up with him in the future. This week, insha'Allah, I am joined by a special guest all the way from the United Kingdom, suffering with the heat, just as I am. Uh, الحمد لله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله يا شيخ جمال. بارك الله فيك يا شيخ. So I don't need to ask you. I was South African being. You've been here since Africa. ما شاء الله ما شاء الله. I've been here since the 28th. That's right of December. Yeah, you went you went inland first. I'm from the UK. Okay. 28th of December. What comes to mind is snow, cold, scarf. Yeah. I came here. I'm sweating, sweating. Allah. Very hot, mashallah. But mashallah, other than the weather, it's lovely. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Sheikh, I, was, I was amazed last year, one of the guests of uh, Al Bayan and Dr. Yusuf is here again. Dr. Yusuf from Sweden. From Sweden. Yeah. He had a thick, um, you know, sweater under his thobe, and I thought he comes from a cold place, and it's December. Allah, he probably uh, <laughs> you know, climatized uh, very quick. <laughs> climatized in different places in the world, mashallah. Sheikh, you're here on a mission. You're yeah. here for, for some work, uh, inshallah. So what's the, the aim of your visit to South Africa? And it doesn't end in Cape Town, right? It, it continues. Uh, it continues for the brothers, but I'm very tight for my time. I have to travel back. Okay. Inshallah. I'm actually leaving here tomorrow, and I'm leaving South Africa the, the following day. Okay. Inshallah okay. ta'ala. So uh, I'm very limited. But they continue the journey. They're going to be for, I think, another 10 days or so. Yes, the, the, yeah, the conference lasts for like two weeks yeah. uh, every, every year. And, uh, you know, we, we're so um, stoked and so happy that every year I speak to the Al Bayan brothers because I've attended, you know, the conference probably for 10 years and I don't understand a word of it yeah. because I'm not Somalian. Yeah. So I said, look, you have to bring some dua that, that speak English and at one point, they brought uh, Sheikh Saeed Ragia from uh, Canada. Canada, yeah. So and then they brought uh, Sheikh Yahya Rabi last year, and now Honorable Self. Sheikh, you know, being a person, a student of the Quran, you obviously have uh, teachers, and I saw one of your teachers uh, speaking about a young boy he met on a visit to uh, the UK, mm. Sheikh Abdul Rashid Ali Sufi. Um, how, how was the first the first time you met him? How how was your your first meeting with him? Did you know him prior to, to meeting him? Bismillah uh, salatu wa ala Rasulillah ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. I didn't know of the Sheikh in terms of his name, mm -hmm. his personality, mm -hmm. uh, the person he was. I did know him, uh, but I didn't know him personally. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, Alhamdulillah, I through the father of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and some of the help of some of the brothers uh, they brought me to the sheikh and I had the opportunity to meet him okay. and uh, introduce myself to him alhamdulillah rabbil alameen uh, it was very very beautiful mashallah it's, uh, it's still a memory that's fresh in my mind although it took place many many years ago maybe 15 years ago now like okay so that gives about, about, about your age I was going to ask uh, yeah, you yeah <laughs> roughly <laughs> uh, about 15 years ago now um, and it was an amazing, amazing, amazing time, great stepping stone. Uh, that little sitting now, perhaps if it didn't happen, mm. then maybe this sitting would have happened. Yeah. And a lot of sittings that happened since then maybe wouldn't have happened as well. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, subhanAllah, you, we overlook um, a little gathering like this one, yeah. but this could be Fatiha to Khair. It may open up many Khadr things. Allah is amazing. It just yeah. connects. 
Alhamdulillah. And he speaks about uh, you you traveling in between the UK and coming to him. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. how you lived in his house like uh, one of my children. And this is yeah, one of my children. Comes, children. And, yeah, yeah. comes and stay in my house all like the time. Until now, yeah. Until now, I just go there. Literally, just coming. Sometimes I don't even tell them. I just go stay straight away in Mashallah. the house. And Alhamdulillah, uh, the Quran brings people together like that, and the hearts are are drawn together. And um, you see the person not to be your family, you see them to be more than a family. Yes. And that's how the Sheikh had taken me, and that's how I uh, view the Sheikh as well, and, and that's how it should be. Okay. Sheikh, I wanted to do a little icebreaker before we okay. started our conversation, okay. Okay. but I actually jumped the gun. I, I'd like to mention uh, maybe three or four Qurra, yes. past and present. Okay. And then you just mentioned the first word that comes into or first sifa or adjective that comes into your your mind. You prepared for that, Sheikh? Okay. Okay. Sure. So we'll go back to Sheikh Abdul Rashid Ali Sufi. Okay. What's the first thing you think about when you when you hear him recite or you hear his name? Um You should have made him last. Okay. Okay, let's let's do that, Sheikh. Yeah. Sheikh Ali Al Hudayfi. Sheikh Ali Al Hudayfi, classic. Medina, you just <laughs> yeah, just classic. Like Sheikh Ali Al is like the longest standing Imam. Like Mashallah, that's that's what I remember. As far as we were, we could remember before forever. our time. Even. He's been there forever. Mashallah, Mashallah. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad Siddiq Al Mashawi. Allah, Sheikh Muhammad Siddiq Al Mashawi is the my favorite personal favorite Qari from that jeel, from mm. that generation, yeah. from the Egyptian Qurra. I'd say for the Sheikh, I'd say if it was to be one word, it would have to be the Sheikh is a legend. Like oh, wow. I don't know, I, it's hard to say anything. About know, for, for me, uh, the Sheikh strikes me to be like someone like Imam Al Nawawi that just has that qabool. qabool. You know, when you ask any Sheikh from any qabool. ism, um, you know, would you advise us to listen to? Ah, Sheikh Mishal. Sheikh Mishal. Ah, Sahih Qabool. Oh, yeah, acceptance. Acceptance. Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Al Manshawi has acceptance in the hearts. That's bigger than even the acceptance on like the hits and the downloads yeah. and, and the, the, the conversations that he has. He's someone uh, a lot of us haven't met, but subhanAllah, we love him so much. We make I, I've, I've heard from someone, and perhaps you, you know Peter Sheikh, that when the Sheikh was recording his Mus'haf, it took much longer than the other Quran Sheikh, yeah. because it would just break down in yeah, tears. All and, the time, yeah. And that's something that I get from Sheikh Mishawi's dissertation. Yeah. Somebody that's reading with deep reflection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My teacher, Sheikh Ahmed al Masrawi, mentioned this as well. Uh, the Sheikh was like that. Yeah. And he, he, they used to see him. Uh, and uh, he's very, very emotional, mm-hmm. the Sheikh Mashallah, when it comes to the recitation of the Quran and the ayat and the power that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his words carry. It really hits his heart, mashallah. Sheikh Al Husari. Sheikh Al Husari, I know you said one word, but <laughs> Sheikh Al Husari has a fadl on me uh, because he's the one that we used to listen to growing up uh, in terms of learning. Mm. See, Sheikh Manshawi, I used to listen to him in terms of just pleasure. Mm. Sheikh Al Husri was a Sheikh we used to listen to when we were learning. Mm-hmm. And even like our students later on down the line we put them through the same program. Yeah. Uh, Sheikh Al Husri is is a uh, is a uh, yani itqan, itqan. Mm-hmm. his qira'a is all a qira'a that you can learn from whatever level that you're on there's something you can appreciate. Yes, yes. I found even if you're since you're senior and you've learned so much in Quran Sheikh Al-Husari can still take from him. Mm-hmm. I remember one Sheikh, he said one time, uh, a student asked him, Sheikh, I want to develop my own voice. Mm-hmm. What should I do? He said, listen to Sheikh Al-Husari. The student was confused. He said, Sheikh Al-Husari's voice is a bit... Yeah. It's nice. I'm not saying nothing bad, but it's, it's flat. Like, mm-hmm. He said, that's what will help you. Because he said, you want to learn your own voice. It won't mm-hmm. benefit you to listen to someone whose voice is already too much. Yeah, yeah. So there's the caliph in getting there. Yeah, it's the caliph. You have to listen to Sheikh Al-Husari. T- tone it all down and then after make your own patterns and make your mm. own styles and make your own uh, path for, for your voice. Mm-hmm. So Sheikh al he's, 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 I guess, our teacher. So I mentioned those Egyptian greats and I, and I cannot not mention Sheikh Abdul Basit Abdul Samad. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Basit Abdul Samad, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, out of the lot, he's the one that I probably listen to the least. Ah. Uh, not for any reason except that 
Um, I just don't listen that much anyway. Yeah. Uh, and there's so many Qur'an to listen to. Yes. Uh, but out of the three, subhanAllah, me personally, he's maybe the least. At the moment, it's Mashawi at the top, and mm -hmm. Husayn is second, and Abdul Basit at the bottom. And before, it was the other way around. Mm -hmm. There was more Husayn and then Mashawi. Uh, but Sheikh Abdullah Sadaq, Abdul Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he, his Surah al duha uh, legendary for that. Also, he has a few maqati' uh, that are very uh, famous as well for combining the qira'at and so on. Uh, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. He, his voice, his power, his, his uh, breath. Mm. These are some of the things that I remember him for, MashaAllah. I'm going to move away from Egypt, Sheikh, into something more. Contemporary, I don't know if you do listen to him. Sheikh yeah. Aitham Al-Dukhay? Not really. I, I'm aware of the Sheikh, mashallah. Very beautiful voice, mm -hmm. very beautiful voice, majestic voice, mashallah. People uh, really do uh, appreciate it, mashallah. And, and it, it's a voice to be appreciated. Mm -hmm. The Sheikh is from Yemen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir. And Ahl Yemen are, are known for their beautiful voices. This is something that people have to, uh, we have to tell them. I, I've uh, never heard yeah, that. I've never heard that. Yeah. Yani, Ahl Yemen, uh, all of them, uh, it's something generally known that they have beautiful voices. You know, um, Capetonians uh, generally have this, it's not a maqam, but like a, a tone that they're reciting, it's called Sana'ani. Sana'ani. Yeah, so the first Muslims came from Indonesia, but those Muslim, Muslims had a very strong tie to, to Yemen. So I think they adopted that Sana'ani type of tone, tone uh, and brought it to, to Cape Town. And the older Mashaykh, they, they, they recite with that tone. And yeah. that, that's cool, Sana'ani. So we're going to end with the, the last two, Sheikh. They say, Sheikh, Sheikh uh, I was going to add just for this benefit, uh, they say that the great companion Abu Musa al-Ash'ari was Yemeni. Yeah. The one who the Prophet said, you have been given one of the beautiful voices oh, of Dawood. Yes, yes, he yes. is Yemeni even. Okay, so, so it's from the Asal uh, that they have that yeah, uh, good voices. Yeah, yeah. Shaykh, I'm going to end for the last two. Two ah. people close to you, Shaykh Ahmed Al Ma'asarawi and Shaykh Abdul Rashid Ali Sufi. You can start with Shaykh Ahmed. Shaykh Ahmed Al Ma'asarawi, as a person or his qira'ah? Uh, what do you think of? Uh, you know them on a personal yeah, level. So when I mention his name, what do you think of? When I, Shaykh Ahmed, uh, I'd say it is. Uh, the Sheikh, he's because uh, because they're more my teachers. Them, I will be more. I have to look at Bias. them. <laughs> no, yeah, but more like cohesively. I have to look yeah. at them as a person, not yeah. just their voice. Yeah, because I know more than the voice. Yeah. You see, when we're speaking with other people, we're all the same. We just hear their voices, yeah, yeah. and we don't know who they are. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but I know who these people are. Uh, Sheikh Ahmed Al Masarawi. Um, I say. Sheikh is the best thing to say, to be honest. <laughs> okay, anything I say, it probably won't give it justice. Sheikh, uh, I'm delayed now, but Sheikh, the Sahaba couldn't uh, describe Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sheikh, you make it better. I'd say Sheikh, I mean, itqan, itqan, yeah. mashallah, and, and giving. Sheikh, I, I met the Sheikh once or twice, and uh, when we did have a short conversation, because he got out of the car at the function. You know, uh, we, we they describe Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as giving him, giving you his whole body when he spoke to you. Yeah. Like he would be busy with somebody when he yeah. spoke to you, he would speak. Uh, that, yeah. uh, that in my short, uh, you know, uh, running with Sheikh Ahmad, he gave me that, that full attention for that. Yes. Uh, for that. Sheikh, Sheikh Ahmad, even recently, some other mashayikh were mentioning that he doesn't say no to anybody. Mm. And this is one of the beautiful qualities that the people of the Quran have that the Quran teaches them to have which is al-ithar and, and, and putting people before you and trying to be selfless to the people and put yourself there uh, for, for people's service and khidmah. And Sheikh, at his age, he's the khad. Sheikh now? Sheikh in his 70s. Allah. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't look at the age of the 50. Yeah, yeah, Allah, yeah, Allah. And then we get to the, to Sheikh, the big the, guy. The biggest Sheikh. <laughs> Sheikh Abdul Rashid, uh, mashallah, he's a man that's, uh, I'd say, and he's very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, righteousness. Yeah. Piety, ibadah, abid, 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 abid. He doesn't look like he's bothered with anything. La, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, no, no. Like people would sit the shima, like the table the, is a bit yeah. skewed, but fine. La, 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 la. Sheikh is in his own planet. But at the same time, when you hear someone like that, you think that when you sit with them, they're not relatable. Yeah. You can't have a conversation with them. La, la, la. He's, 
I've seen like uh, from the brothers who I always take to visit the Sheikh, they're always left saying that was one of the be- the most humbling people I've ever met. Mashallah. Very nice, very down to earth, smiling, asking how we are, honoring us, giving us his time, giving us gifts. So he, although he's not really attached to the dunya, mm. he makes the people, subhanAllah, uh, feel, feel loved, welcome, uh, welcomed. Loved. Yeah. So alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So Sheikh, you are... You, as, as what I've read in your bio, UK born and bred. Yes. So your father made hijrah to the UK? Or yes. Was it Both my parents made hijrah to the UK, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you, you studied your hiv in, in the UK? In the UK. I'm very amazed at the system that our Somali brothers have. In Cape Town, South Africa, and I think probably in the rest of South Africa and other parts of the world, when somebody wants to do hiv, they usually take the kid out of school for three years, flat, finish, complete the hiv, and then the student goes back to school. Most Somali madrasas I've, I've heard about and seen here, it's an after-school program. So mm-hmm. how was your Yes, your program? when I was after school, I didn't take one day out of school. I went to primary school and secondary school and college. There was a, th- a time where I took a few years out, mm-hmm. uh, but that wasn't for hif. Okay. Because by then I'd finished my hif anyway. <laughs> I finished my hif when I was 12 years old. Oh, 12 or 13, I finished. So, so school finished at 16. Mm. So if we're talking about the, the period that I was memorizing the Quran, there was no school taken out. Yes, sir. Later on in the future, if I did take out any years, that, they were for other reasons. Uh, but we didn't do that. Uh, alhamdulillah, we had a very good madrasa that we learned. Uh, uh, they used to be uh, saying a joke they used to make in our area. Uh, our madrasa had 1,000 students that studied there a week. Big madrasa, so they had different groups and uh, 1,000 kids roughly at that time. And about 100 were hafad, so 10th. So at yeah. that time, they said that's a good number. Yeah. So I remember some of the brothers, they used to say that if memorizing the Qur'an is fardu kifaya, then Mr. Sunnah have taken that whole burden from <laughs> yes, us. Sir, we don't no. need to do it now. Yes, sir, <laughs> no. The rest of us, we could just... That was a little joke, but it shows, mashallah, we used to always hear every other month there's a hafal, there's a graduation, there's a celebration, the student finishes the Qur'an, mashallah. So we used to go after school, and we used to go on the weekend, and we just used to work hard, and alhamdulillah. So it does take hard work. If I look what we, what we have uh, called the maktab system, when I was at primary school, there used to be madrasa during the school holidays. Mm. It'd be public school holiday, but no holiday from, from madrasa. Years passed, and it's now reduced to Saturday school or Sunday school. We used to go Monday to Thursday, and then school holidays. Now, once a week. And even that becomes you know, a, a burden for, for certain people because, you know, you're taking the kid out of school, he needs to do his homework. And it's so important. How important is it for, especially kids living in the West, to have that attachment to the, to the masjid, to have a friend? Because I watched the Ilmfeed uh, podcast. We were speaking about how a teacher needs to be more than just somebody that listens to yeah. the Quran, but be a friend, be a mentor. Yes, absolutely. I think... For example, myself, we had that. Mm. We had that in our teacher. We had that in our class. We had that in our madrasa. So if the asr is, if the student can get that, then I don't think uh, the school will be that challenging mm. if he does it together. Because he's going to a friend. He's going to... Khalas, yeah. So because he's gonna be, he's gonna be invested in the Quran anyway. Yeah. But if he's not invested in the Quran, then he becomes invested in the school, mm. and then you want him to become great at Quran is very difficult. Mm. Uh, so I think it would depend from house to house, children to children, program to program. Uh, the thing is, I always mention that because a lot of the teachers, uh, the teachers themselves are not fully cut out for teaching, teaching. because some of them they do this uh, on the side. Mm. They're not really that invested into it. All for a paycheck. Oh, uh, that's they, happening in many uh, places. I mentioned it so many times. <laughs> uh, that's not something new that I discussed. So because the, his mindset is already qasir, it's very mm. like long, short term. So he's not going to give a lot of impact. And a student can feel, like he can feel it in his body, mm-hmm. his heart. A teacher who's giving him everything and more than everything. Versus one that's like very like, you know, very passive and mm-hmm. yeah, not really with it. Uh, so I'd say the children, the young children, they're going to need a lot of support. Mm-hmm. Uh, the teachers, the parents have to all be working together in making sure that we try our best that this child... He's mostly invested into Quran more than anything by way of virtue, by mm. way of a hadith, by way of making him love it, by way of t- telling him about what this brings for him and his life and the impact it would have. Then this person will grow up to be 
وشاب نشا على طاعة الله. So it's a holistic approach. Uh, you know, I've, I've experienced my wife um, did Quran tuition for uh, an organization in the States. And she had this one student that, uh, it's already late night, the, you know, the, the time zone difference is, it's big. So by midnight, my wife gets on and listens to students. And there was a specific student who would, she wouldn't put the light on in the room. She'd have a hoodie over and very disinterested in, in the Quran. Only later, my wife would find out that this girl was, uh, you know, middle school in America. And she was identifying as atheist. And the parents just put her in a Quran school, hoping that it's, there was no um, so, holistic approach. There was no speaking to her about the fadl of the Quran. They just put her in the Quran school. And obviously, she didn't make a, a success of it. Mm. And uh, that's, that's very common. Mm. The forcing the kids into it, not looking at how far the Quran has reached in their lives, not speaking to them about it, mm. not having that tarbiyah. Not even present in the parents' lives. Nothing, this. nothing. So... That's not really going to, that's maybe going to put them further away, if yeah. anything. I remember there was a story, there was a father, he took his, uh, I think he took his children out of Madrasa, mm -hmm. and he was teaching them at home. Mm -hmm. So he came to Hajj uh, one year and he was talking about the story, he said that, um, I teach my children Quran, and he said, I hit them to learn Quran so much that they fall down unconscious. I continue hitting them, hitting them, hitting them until they become unconscious. Yeah. He asked the Sheikh, <coughs> excuse me, he asked the Sheikh, Sheikh, do I have any reward? The Sheikh, he, he laughed and then he became very angry. Mm. He said, you are mujrim, mujrim kabir, you are criminal. Mm. He said, if Allah doesn't forgive you, you are going to be punished, severe yes. punishment by Allah. And if Allah doesn't have mercy on these children, then they're going to hate the Quran. Mm. And he said, subhanAllah, later on, they didn't actually like, go back to Quran. They left mm. it. Because what you did, he said. I've heard of students who said, I just want to finish to get out of this co the company of this teacher. I don't want to yeah. ever see him. Uh. In fact, there was one sheikh that got old and they wanted a replacement for him. And they went to one of his first graduates. And this guy said, no, sorry. I finished back then with him. I don't want to see him ever again. SubhanAllah, there's loads of stories like that. Mm. Loads. I, but it happens always in the madr madrasas this mm. morning. The younger children. I've, I have one brother as well from Qatar, I know, and like you hear this, and every time I look into the cases, mm -hmm. it's always to do with hitting. <laughs> she had a member. Or forcing. My first Hajj, I was in, uh, just finished high school in the late 90s, and I, I remember walking in the Haram and having seen these halaqat of Quran, where the teacher had a big stick, and then he is understudy, uh, probably the senior student, he also had a, a big stick, and there was like, Lots of, beat, lots of beating happening uh, in the haram. Fast forward now, and, and you go to Medina, you don't see that uh, beating is taking place. No, the scholars advise against it. It's mm. not right. Mm. Uh, this method that we're taking, we're taking it for the child to learn the best thing ever. Yeah, it's, mm. it's not right. The, it should be done, the tarbiyah should be done through tahbib, mm -hmm. through making them love the Quran, appreciate the Quran, and give the Quran its due right and importance. Not by having bad memories. Mm -hmm. Wallahi, Shaykh, I, another story I remembered. My teacher told me this. This happened in Qatar. He said we were in a gathering and big mashayikh. Mm -hmm. Imagine 50s, 60s, 70s, old people. And they're all talking about their upbringing with ilm and talab and Quran and what they learned. So everyone was mentioning, mentioning. We got to one of the shuyukh. When the microphone got to him, he just started crying. And he's in his 60s. A six-year-old man, Sheikh, crying. So Hadib, everyone was very shocked. And then when he got himself together, this is the first thing he mentioned. He said, when I was young, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, something like this, he said, they used to hit me. He said, 40, 50 years the later, I'm still, still the scholar still there. That's when I realized they don't go away. Mm. For a Sheikh at that age to still cry about it. So I don't know. So some of them, uh, طبعًا, we don't know their intentions. Mm. I don't think they all mean bad. Yeah. Uh, but they just don't know. They think they're doing the good thing, but they're doing they a terrible thing. What's, what's the ijazah and the sanad, the, the sticker was such a... Just just like, the, yeah. You know, I mean, like in, in marriage, uh, well, when I often advise new new couples, don't mimic your parents' marriage. There might yeah. be some good, take the good. But yeah. sometimes we like mimic exactly what your father... There's no training. Yeah. Uh, there's no teacher training, really. So you just mimic what your 
وت تيتش دي يا ابن جيتوب اوت كامز يا يا الله سبحانه وتعالى بروتكت اس امين امين شيخ سو انتريستنج قراءات ذات ذات از يو يو ميجر ميجر فوكس ماني بيبل ثينك قراء لايك وي مينشن ذا قراء يو نو شيخ عبد الباسط عبد الصمد وين وي سبيك اباوت قراءات يو ثينك اتس اباوت فويس اند هاو وود يو وات از قراءات فور ذا فيري Novice person who hears this word for the first time. Yes. What is the science of Qur'at? Qur'at is a science uh, from the sciences of the Qur'an. And it focuses on the wordings of the Qur'an and the different ways it has been transmitted. Hmm. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the Qur'an unzila ala sabati ahruf. That this Qur'an was revealed in seven ahruf. Hmm. This is a hadith that's reached mutawatir level. Hmm. Tawatur. Uh, so it's authentic. And it's been done to make it easy for the ummah, as we are mm. a ummah that's very contrasted and very like the water joke you told us earlier, Sheikh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like that, and uh, the Quran came down for this reason to make it easy for the people to read and appreciate. Mm. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ he said that in the ummah there is the old lady and the unlettered man. And the different different groups that are going to struggle to read different things. So the Quran came down to accommodate for the Muslim mm-hmm. Ummah uh, in the Qiraat. So the Qiraat are various ways of reading the same text uh, in order for us to provide ease uh, for the Ummah. And uh, at the same time, it also provides enriched meanings mm-hmm. that you appreciate, that you would not have become aware of if it wasn't for the Qiraat. Maliki Yawm al-Din, Maliki Yawm al-Din. This now is not to do with ease. This is to do with enriched meanings. Malik, the king of the day of judgment, or the owner of the day of judgment. Malik, Yawmiddin, the king of the day of judgment. Mm. You see, as someone may say, a king and an owner is different. Yes, a king and an owner independently is different. But from the attributes of Allah is the same. Allah is the king and Allah is the owner. A king doesn't own everybody. A king of a land doesn't own the people. Mm. But the king of all kings owns everything. So Allah has to have the, the attributes meaning. together. Yeah, enrich the meaning, subhanAllah. Uh, that's an example. And then an example of like, for example, where it provides ease is for example, Sirat al-Ladina an'amta alayhim, an'amta alayhum, him, hum. Some people, it's easy for them to say hum. Some people alayhim. Here the meaning is the same. Uh, so this is a basic example of Qiraat. Yeah. But of the, the Qiraat, Sheikh, you, d- you decided them individually over the years? Yeah, yeah. So I've always been spending a lot of time in this area. I uh, read to different mashayikh, some I've combined, some I read specifically uh, to them combining, some I read specifically to them uh, joint, um, not combining, one by one. Others I, I did both mm. here and there. Which one was the most challenging for you? The Qiraat wise? Yeah. Uh, no doubt, Hamza. Okay. Qiraat Hamza, Imam Hamza. Then for I, me it was always strange, Sheikh. Um, you know, I studied in Egypt and then you get a brother uh, from North Africa. Like when we... Uh, for example, Warish for the first time, because we, 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 we're listening to Hafs all the time, we find that something like nice, amazing, something new, like something fresh. But here you get something, somebody from North Africa that has, has to learn Hafs as a, as a Kira, a secondary or third yeah. uh, Kira. It's tough, yeah. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough because your tongue only becomes no <laughs> way, no way, no way. Yes. You, find, you find a person from Morocco, they only know Warish from mm. a young age. Yes, yes. To say Malik Yomidin, subhanAllah, it's, it, they're going to go through a lot of jihad, jihad. <laughs> Malik, man, Malik, I was Malik, they can't say it. And the opposite, someone who doesn't know that. So I think wherever the tongue is used to, subhanAllah, yeah. but this goes to show that Allah facilitated it. If you're in need of it, it's there. Allah Akbar. <laughs> Sheikh, so, uh, Sheikh Abdul Rashid Ali Sufi made this promise to you that you can come to me one day and uh, recite. When he met you the first time, he said, this boy... He has some potential, and I will make time for, for him. Allah. How easy was he accessible after that? SubhanAllah. You know, you, you just something you said just touched me because, SubhanAllah, after all these years, no one said it to be like that. She, that's what I had from the, from the That's how I got it. Uh, that's what, that's yeah, what I got from the Sheikh's. Uh, after all of these years, no one ever said it like that. <laughs> like the Sheikh made a promise to you that one day. It's true. But, but because when I think about it and I, I digest that, it, it, it was a promise, like yeah. he said, you are going to come, and he fulfilled his promise, and because he fulfilled his promise, 
Alhamdulillah, whatever happened since then has happened. Allah. But if that didn't happen, then Allah yeah. if it would happen, right? Uh, so Alhamdulillah, the Sheikh has been very, very, very kind, and the Sheikh has been very. He is quite busy, also. Extremely busy. He's one of the most busiest human beings. Yeah, everything, everything, everything. You mentioned it. Yeah. But Mashallah, the Sheikh makes time. The thing is, the Sheikh Quran is all of the Mashaykh I found with Quran, the Sheikh makes time. The thing is, the Sheikh Quran, all of the Mashaykh I found with Quran. This is a sign, Inshallah, that they're sincere. Inshallah, that when they see people who want Quran, even though they're really busy, they'll give them everything. Yeah. They'll, they'll give them. It's not like in other crafts where the person wants to be the best tailor yeah. and look, uh, I'm going to keep my craft, to, yeah. I'll die with my craft. Yeah. It's something that they no, no, want no, no. to they want people uh, share. To, yeah, share. And they want this to be passed on and they want as many people as possible to benefit and to learn about this and for their lives to be transformed. And if that means that we're going to sit with you at even a, a time that is irregular that people don't sit down we will sit down mm. we will sit down the sheikh would sometimes subhanallah he will, he will be with a group of quran students and i remember one time he was sitting with them very long sitting down lecture 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 quran muhadara then he just made a joke to them he looked at them and he said we've been sitting down for a long time should we stand up for a long time yeah so everyone knows what i mean yeah yeah but i mean subhanallah you're thinking does he get tired like What's, she, what's the human side? Ustav Yahya Rabi was mentioning he was uh, at uh, a conference like the Al-Bayan conference and uh, the Shabab was speaking in the masjid and then, um, you know, they were speaking as late, up late at night and they're speaking and Sheikh Abdul Rashid Ali Sufi came into the masjid, saw what was happening. He didn't say a word, went into the mihrab, put Still. on the microphone and Stop. started. Yeah, and they'll come. And they came, yeah. everybody came. Yeah, that's how it is, that's how it is. But then uh, Sheikh Abdul Rashid uh, mentions a story in Egypt where he goes and uh, stands behind Sheikh Osama Abdul Azim. I, I, uh, I went there actually once with a friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, we were supposed to meet the Sheikh at uh, some point at uh, one ma'ad. You know, in Egypt, you need a permission slip for everything. You yeah. didn't get the permission slip. So the muhadra didn't take place. And myself and another brother, we said, look, let's go meet the Sheikh at his masjid. So we went through for Taraweeh. Um, so we got there, as we're driving, uh, all the other massages, they're coming, Tarawih is coming out, they're finishing. And uh, we, we get there to Sheikh Osama, and he's having dinner, and he tells us, you know, I have some dinner with me. So we thought Tarawih is finished. And then uh, the Sheikh hadn't started uh, Isha yet, to our surprise. And then uh, he, he recited five Jews in Isha. <laughs> <laughs> you were there? I was there. I you was stayed. there. No, I, after Isha, it was all like, like uh, sitting and standing and my leg. And the Sheikh was at least in his 60s by then. He was completely gray. Uh, needless to say, I didn't hang around for uh, Tarawih. Because the Sheikh eats that time. Because usually his, his Tarawih goes up at, <laughs> goes up at the Fajr. And I, I remember Sheikh Abdul Rashid saying in one uh, lecture, he went there and this was really... <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, somebody yeah, yeah. off Qiyamul Layl standing, you know, behind. Oh, okay. <laughs> Allah, yeah. Kum darajatun and Allah. Ajib, Allah. Wallahi alam. But did you pray Isha yourself? Did you finish Isha five years? I, fin I finished the Isha. That's good. Then, uh, I was That's good. Yourself. <laughs> That's good. You did your tarawih, everything in one. It was only one night. You did it quickly. You know, uh, Osama's senior students used to have black um, lines under the eyes. the eyes in Ramadan. But he was, it was as if it was just... لا لا no, just give him second nature. لا لا رحمه الله تعالى رحمة واسعة. رحمة واسعة. Sheikh, so um, as a teacher of Quran now, how does your day look if you're not traveling? You said you were in Canada a week ago, now you're in South Africa. Yeah, and then I'm going to Dubai next. Yes, yeah, salam. And then back to the UK, inshallah. Uh, when I'm in the UK, though, the time is spent between studying and uh, teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how it's spent mainly. There are other things and other activities. Uh, but the main thing is studying and teaching. Um, that's what I've been doing for a number of years now. Mm. Uh, over, over the years, the timetable may change slightly here and there. Uh, but this is the main thing, like studying, teaching, studying, teaching, studying, teaching. Oh. Alhamdulillah. Sheikh Tumara, you're speaking at the conference. Yeah. By the time we premiere this, the conference would have happened. Shams. And you're speaking about one's relationship with the Quran. That's the, the, I don't know, maybe the topic might have changed, changed by yeah. then. But... Um, you know, when, when the Prophet وسلم, uh, ordered Abu Bakr to lead the salah in his illness, Aisha said, no, get somebody else because he cries too much. My mm. father cries too much. We read complete mm. khatams and sometimes we don't shed a tear. Subhanallah. Why? Subhanallah. This is all the Sahaba, like Abu Bakr, that has how it was. 
Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, even before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know the famous hadith that uh, you would hear from his chest uh, like the sound uh, of a, like a teapot, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that's steaming like this. Mm-hmm. This is the sound that you kind of hear, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they said about him that he had uh, very damp cheeks uh, due to excessive crying in the Quran al Kareem. And likewise, the rest of the Sahaba as well. I think it's because the Sahaba, they really understood that uh, the Qira'ah that brings you to that state is the Qira'ah of At-Tadabbur, mm-hmm. At-Tafakkur. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayatihi wa liyatadhakkara ulul albab. A book that is filled with blessings. Yeah. It's a blessed book. But Allah revealed it in order for you to reflect over its verses and for you to become men of understanding. Uh, so the Qira'ah to be a Qira'ah that only isn't restricted to just reading the words, mm-hmm. but reflecting over the words. Qira'ah tadabburiyya, Qira'ah al-fahm, Qira'ah al-ma'ani. And this is extremely important. And nowadays, uh, I do see a lot of mashayikh and people of knowledge mentioning it because there's a need. Uh, there's a bit of a loss in this area. As much as we are happy to find itqan and qiraat and strong mm. students, we do need this. And I always mention, I try to mention it in my durusas because I like to, I don't like to tip the scale, uh, so to speak. Uh, I find one group and then another group. And I don't mm. really find, so some are saying, okay, this is like qiraat stuff is not really, mm. just to do faham, faham, faham and understand mm. And then the other ones are just doing faham, faham, faham and Without, the, yeah. uh, the other way. Yeah, and I think لا ذلك ولا ذلك يعني both are required. And why would a Muslim sell herself short? Yeah, and you don't sell yourself short. You have to do this, then do this, and do this. And Allah mentioned that He sent the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam out for all of those things. وَالَّذِي بَعْثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَتْلُو عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ So this reading, he reads the verses of Allah. وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ So we can't say we don't read or we don't memorize and we just understand. Nor can we say that we understand and we don't read. Or we do all of them together. Uh, and I think that that's how the Sahaba, they were. A lot of reports show this, that some of them, they used to say... Uh, all around as well, holistically. Yeah. Holistically, yeah, they used to say some of the early people that uh, the early generations, uh, they used to find memorization of the Quran difficult. But they used to find the implementation and the understanding mm. easy. And the later generations, you'll find a lot of them finding the, recita- the memorization easy. But the understanding and the implementation difficult. difficult. So I would say, inshallah ta'ala, that we need to all make sure and ensure to understand, at least as an introductory level, that we need to give this equal importance. It's as crucial. It's very important. It requires a lot of time, just as much as the memorization does. And then after this, inshallah ta'ala, to make dua to Allah. Because if you've understood it, then al-muwafiq man Allah. Allah has to give you tawfiq. If you want tawfiq, it comes from Allah. To ask Allah to make the Quran rabi'a qalbik wa nura sadrik wa jala'a huznik wa dhahaba hammik. That the Quran becomes the light of your heart and the one that takes away your worries and sadness and makes you happy and etc. Uh, and then after this, you take the asbab that are required. Uh, just like you're memorizing, just like you're understanding, you know how to do this, you go to a shaykh, go to a class, the fahm and the understanding the same. Yeah. Tafsir and go to lessons and durus and learn about the words of the Quran, inshaAllah ta'ala. And the Quran is bahru la sahira lahu. It's an ocean with no shore. Uh, for as long as you are in it, you are still learning more and more and more and picking up more and more and more. And it's a lifelong project. And uh, we hope that inshaAllah ta'ala that we're able to Give it some of its right, inshallah. Two last questions, Sheikh, and we'll end with the third and final, inshallah. Now, that third one just popped I in like my mind. Uh, <laughs> um, firstly, Sheikh, um, when did Sheikh, when did Jamal Abdel Nasir, the no, Hafiz, no. become the public speaker? Because that's your Instagram videos is my first uh, exposure. exposure to you. Your short remind or the clips of the reminders. Yeah, reminders, yeah. It just happened, like, so. I mean, obviously the natural standard way of like teaching Quran, just do Quran. Mm. And then after that, you become more into Quran mm. and then you learn more. So you um, teach like higher Quran classes. Yes, 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 yes. And then after that, you start getting older. So you, you learn more sciences. Yes, yes. And after you start traveling, then you meet mashayikh, then, 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 then. Then after that, you just see yourself like in different arenas. <laughs> Khutbah here, yeah. here, 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 here. Um, and then later you just move on from there. It wasn't really planned. There was no roadmap. Ah, it yeah. just it just became one step at a time. 
alhamdulillah. Uh, if you look like maybe five years ago, um, you wouldn't find as many things as you find today. Mm -hmm. If you were to look 10 years ago, you find nearly nothing mm -hmm. uh, in terms of like speaking. Yes, yes. Um, so, it's been, it evolved. Yeah, it's been a journey. Yeah, yeah. Sheikh, so in January and uh, the month of Ramadan is about to start in, in the month of March. You, you lead Taraweeh? Yes. For how many years now? Uh, I first started leading in Taraweeh in 2008. Okay, so 15, 15, 16 years. Yeah. Do you have a regiment before Ramadan or is it just like, just get into them? You don't do any special revision for the month of Ramadan? No, do you still get nerves, nuts, nothing? It, it happens, it happens. No, it certainly happens. <laughs> uh, but not like the, the crazy nerves. Uh, None of the like leg shaking. <laughs> yes. That's gone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but here are the natural nerves. I was speaking about in lecture the other day. Natural nerves are normal. Uh, yeah. You have to have that shit. Yeah, yeah. If you get too confident, if you become too confident, yeah. Yeah, it becomes problematic. Yeah, yeah. Natural nerves are normal. Natural nerves here and there, yeah. Okay, type. Sheikh, so uh, I saw this video yesterday of a female influencer. She wasn't Muslim three months ago. She became a Muslim uh, after the Gaza genocide started and saw the resilience of, of Muslims. She read the Quran. She made a video yesterday saying she's involved with a Quran printing or Quran distribution uh, organization. Well, before what happened in Palestine, used to distribute 300 boxes of Qurans per month. They now distribute three and a half thousand to four thousand boxes of Quran mm. to non Muslims. As a Muslim, what is our duty towards this sudden interest? in the Qur'an and wanting to understand the Qur'an and, and learn the Qur'an. Uh, as Muslims? Uh, yeah. Meaning Muslims wanted to learn it? Muslim, no, there's non-Muslims that want to learn about the Qur'an. Yeah. yeah, Definitely. I think we, we need to play a role in being able to educate them in this and teach them this. Uh, but I think it should be done through education. Hmm. Uh, Merely giving a person a Qur'an and let him no, go, go on his own? I don't think that's the best way at all. Hmm. <laughs> because when a person has no khalfiya, no background, hmm. Uh, and you give them a text or you give them a work and uh, you tell them uh, is that your own this mm -hmm. uh, person is going to yeah, the, the pull things out and, yeah, and not, they don't understand how the book works yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a whole book it's, it's, it's a whole complete. book yeah it's going through a system and yeah. what does this mean sometimes it doesn't mean what you see it to be like the apparent words that you see here isn't the apparent words it has another understanding uh, so definitely I think through the help of our educated scholars and trained uh, uh, people in the community that we have, we need to definitely give them some time, teach them, give them seminars, uh, but we need to be the ones who open up that world for them, open up that door for them, mm. not give the, the Quran to them recklessly, mm. and then just tell them to just do self-study and work it out. <laughs> yeah. That wouldn't be the right thing to do. Yeah. But I think the idea in general is a very good idea, and mm. that's how the Prophet ﷺ used to do it. SubhanAllah, understanding Arabic, and understanding, like being in, in, in an environment of deen, even if you're non Muslim, will at least help you have some understanding. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, the Prophet ﷺ, he used to just read the Quran upon the non Muslims and they were embrace Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, now a lot of meanings have been lost languages, people, mm -hmm. cultivations, different societies. Uh, so I think it will require people to educate them on it, inshallah. But even if you speak about the, the language barrier, I've seen people just being mesmerized by the sound of, yes, the, as well. of the Quran. That's yeah. so and that's what we reckon. Yeah. yeah, anything. The Quran, like the words, the yeah. book, the hifaz. Sometimes you find a person shocked. They say, this 600 page book, that young boy knows. Yeah, that young boy does know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He knows every single word. Okay. Yeah, so much. Sheikh, um, so we're going to a new school here. Um, in fact, Sheikh Munir's school is starting tomorrow. Yeah. School holidays is very short. To... Quran students, Hiv students, young Quran students, starting off, finishing, halfway, short advice. Uh, inshallah, remember that you guys uh, and girls have been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, learn his book and become custodians and guardians of the book. So inshallah ta'ala, understand that this is the greatest thing that you could ever uh, learn, it's the best thing that we have with us. It's a big ni'mah and fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep at it inshallah. Be patient. The Quran requires patience. Uh, if you're not patient, then you're going to struggle. Uh, because learning, memorizing, revising, implementing, attendance, all of this are different things. And there's more than that even. 
that are part of your journey, each one requires a level of patience. Uh, the scholars say, say طلب العلم شديد وحفظه أشد من طلبه والعمل به أشد من حفظه والسلامة منه أشد من العمل به Hilal ibn al-Ala from the scholars of the past. Seeking knowledge is difficult and memorizing is even more difficult and then implementing is even more difficult. And then he said that making sure that the Quran doesn't complain about you and it becomes a proof for you and not against you is even more difficult. So the first thing will be patience, inshaAllah ta'ala. The second thing will be shukr. If you're grateful to Allah and you come with shukr, he will give you more. Everyone wants to be given more. So this is an easy way to get more, inshaAllah, but be grateful from your hearts. And the third thing, bi tabarak wa ta'ala, is make dua. Dua is very important. We overlook it. Dua, we have to trust in Allah, rely on Allah, and ask Him to open it up for us. He's the only one that can do that. These are the three advices, inshallah, that I have for the youngsters. Jazakumullah kulla khair, Sheikh. And yeah. Ahmed, our technique tech guy, yeah. mentioned that I have to ask you to recite two or three uh, verses, inshallah. inshallah. We spoke about the, the changes, maybe something short that I can changes. implement the, the changes, inshallah. Not too much for you, inshallah. No, no, no. Jazakumullah khair. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا عباد الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وأنيبوا إلى ربكم وأسلموا له من قبل أن ياتيكم العذاب ثم لا تنصرون واتبعوا أحسن ما أنزل إليكم من ربكم من قبل أن ياتيكم العذاب بوتة من قبل أن ياتيكم العذاب بغتة وأنتم لا تشكرون أن تقول نفس يا حسرة على ما فرطت في جنب الله وإن كنت لمن الساخرين أو تقول لو أن الله هداني لكنت من المتقين أو تقول حين تر العذاب لو أن لي كرة فأكون من المحسنين بلى قد جاءتك آياتي فكذبت بها واستكبرت وكنت من الكافرين ويوم القيامة تر الذين كذبوا على الله وجوههم مسودة أليس في جهنم مثوى للمتكبرين وينجي الله الذين اتقوا بمفازتهم لا يمسهم السوء ولا هم يحزنون صدق الله جزاكم الله خير بارك الله فيكم شكرا شيخ جزاكم الله كل خير and sorry for the heat of Cape Town South Africa شرفتنا بارك الله فيكم till we sit again and speak with amazing guests السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته هلا بالخميس هلا بالخميس هلا هلا